There lived a young man named Siddhartha. Siddhartha was known throughout the village for his wisdom and compassion. His serene presence seemed to bring solace to those in despair, and his words were like a balm to wounded hearts. The village thrived under the leadership of a kind and just king, but not all was well in the kingdom. Siddhartha could sense a growing restlessness among the people, a disquiet that seemed to emanate from the depths of their souls. He knew that the world was full of suffering, but he also believed that there was a way to transcend it. One day, Siddhartha decided to leave the comforts of his home to seek answers to life's greatest questions. He left behind his family, his status, and his possessions to embark on a journey of self-discovery. He wandered through forests and crossed rivers, engaging with ascetics, philosophers, and seekers of truth. During his travels, Siddhartha encountered a sage named Abdaka. Abdaka was renowned for his knowledge of meditation and the deep insights he had gained into the human mind. Siddhartha became his disciple and immersed himself in rigorous meditation and ascetic practices for years. Siddhartha lived a life of extreme austerity. He ate only meager portions of food, wore ragged clothes, and exposed himself to the harshest elements. He believed that by renouncing all physical comforts, he could transcend the suffering that plagued humanity. However, despite his dedication and intense practices, Siddhartha found himself growing weaker and more emaciated. He realized that this extreme asceticism had brought him no closer to the answers he sought. In fact, it had taken him farther away from his goal. One fateful day, Siddhartha collapsed under a tree, his body frail and his spirit broken. He had hit rock bottom, both physically and mentally. He knew that there must be another way to attain enlightenment, to understand the nature of suffering and its cessation. As he lay there, a young woman from a nearby village named Sujata discovered Siddhartha. Seeing his pitiable condition, she offered him a bowl of rice pudding and gently nursed him back to health. Her act of kindness touched Siddhartha deeply, for he had realized that extreme asceticism was not the path to enlightenment. Instead, it was a balanced and compassionate approach to life that would lead him there. Siddhartha decided to abandon the life of extreme asceticism and began to eat nourishing food and take care of his body. He found a beautiful grove near a village called Bhav Gaya and settled there to continue his quest for truth. Under the Bodhi tree, Siddhartha resolved to meditate until he had unraveled the mysteries of existence. He sat in deep contemplation, his mind focused and his heart open. Days turned into weeks and Siddhartha faced inner demons, doubt and temptation. Mara, the personification of desire and ego, sought to distract Siddhartha from his meditation. Mara unleashed a torrent of illusions, sending his most alluring and terrifying temptations to disrupt Siddhartha's peace. But Siddhartha remained steadfast. He recognized Mara's illusions for what they were, mere distractions on the path to enlightenment. With unwavering determination, Siddhartha touched the earth, calling upon it to bear witness to his awakening. In that moment, Siddhartha became the Buddha, the awakened one. The news of the Buddha's enlightenment spread far and wide, and people from all walks of life came to hear his teachings. The village of Bhav Gaya became a place of pilgrimage, and the teachings of the Buddha, known as the Dharma, spread like wildfire. One day, as the Buddha was addressing a large gathering of people, a man approached him. The man was disheveled, his clothes torn, and his face bore the scars of a difficult life. He was known as Kisagotami, a grieving mother who had lost her only child. Kisagotami fell at the Buddha's feet, sobbing uncontrollably. She pleaded with him to bring her child back to life, believing that the Buddha possessed miraculous powers. The Buddha, with infinite compassion in his eyes, told Kisagotami, I will help you, but first, you must bring me a mustard seed from a household that has not known suffering. Kisagotemi was filled with hope and immediately set out on her quest. She knocked on the doors of one house after another, asking for a mustard seed. But in each household, she encountered people who had experienced their own share of sorrow and hardship. As the day turned into night, 
Kisa Gotemi realized a truth the Buddha had been trying to convey. Suffering was an inherent part of the human experience, and she was not alone in her grief. She returned to the Buddha, understanding that her loss was a universal pain shared by all. The Buddha gently guided Kisa Gotemi towards a deeper understanding of her suffering. He taught her that pain and loss were part of the human condition, but through wisdom and compassion, one could transcend the suffering and find peace. Kisagotani became a devoted disciple of the Buddha, and her story served as a powerful reminder that even in the face of the most profound grief, there was a path to healing and enlightenment. Over the years, the Buddha continued to impart his teachings to a growing number of followers. His wisdom and compassion touched the hearts of people from all walks of life, from kings to beggars, and his message of nonviolence, compassion, and mindfulness spread throughout the land. One day, as the Buddha was wandering through a forest, he came across a group of children tormenting a wounded swan. They were pelting the defenseless bird with stones, and it lay there, bleeding and in pain. The Buddha approached the children and asked them to stop. He knelt down and gently cradled the injured swan in his hands. With infinite tenderness, he cleaned the bird's wounds and applied healing herbs. As the swan began to recover, it gazed up at the Buddha with eyes filled with gratitude. It seemed to understand that it had found a friend and protector in this compassionate being. The children who had witnessed the transformation were deeply moved by the Buddha's kindness. They apologized for their actions and promised never to harm another living being. The Buddha used this incident as a teaching moment, explaining to the children the importance of compassion and nonviolence. He showed them that even in the midst of cruelty and suffering, one could choose to respond with love and healing. As the years passed, the Buddha's teachings continued to inspire and transform the lives of countless individuals. His message of compassion, mindfulness, and the path to liberation from suffering resonated deeply with people seeking meaning and purpose in their lives. Siddhartha, who had once set out on the journey to understand the nature of suffering, had now become the Buddha, the beacon of light illuminating the path to liberation. His own struggles and trials had led him to the profound realization that suffering was an integral part of human existence, but it could be transcended through wisdom, compassion, and the cultivation of a peaceful mind. The story of the Buddha's life and teachings reminds us that even in the face of the most challenging circumstances, there is a path to resilience and transformation. Like Siddhartha, we may encounter moments of despair and doubt, but with perseverance and an open heart, we can find our way through the darkest of times. The Buddha's teachings continued to spread far and wide, touching the lives of people across diverse lands and cultures. Among the Buddhist disciples was a man named Ananda. He was the Buddha's cousin and had been with him since the early days of his journey. Ananda was known for his exceptional memory and his unwavering devotion to the Buddha. He had absorbed the teachings like a sponge, and his ability to recite the Dharma was legendary. One day, as Ananda was sitting in meditation, he had a profound realization. He understood that while he had memorized the Buddha's teachings and could recite them with precision, he had not yet experienced the true essence of the Dharma in his own life. He realized that knowledge alone was not enough. It had to be integrated into one's daily existence. With this newfound understanding, Ananda approached the Buddha and expressed his desire to deepen his practice and truly experience the transformative power of the Dharma. The Buddha smiled warmly and welcomed Ananda's aspiration. Ananda dedicated himself to a life of contemplation, meditation, and compassionate action. He traveled far and wide, sharing the teachings of the Buddha and helping those in need. Along his journey, he encountered individuals facing various forms of suffering, illness, poverty, loss, and despair. In a distant village, Ananda met a woman named Soma who was struggling to find balance and peace in her life. Soma was a weaver who had worked tirelessly for years, weaving intricate patterns into beautiful fabrics. However, her relentless pursuit of perfection had taken a toll on her body and spirit. Soma had heard of Ananda's wisdom and sought his guidance. She explained how she had pushed herself to the brink of exhaustion, 
hoping that her dedication to her craft would bring her happiness and fulfillment. Instead, she found herself physically drained and mentally distraught. Ananda listened attentively to Soma's story and saw the parallel between her pursuit of perfection in weaving and his earlier pursuit of knowledge without experience. He gently advised her to find balance and mindfulness in her work, encouraging her to weave not as a means to an end, but as a meditation, a way to be fully present in the moment. Soma took Ananda's advice to heart and began to approach her weaving with newfound awareness. She allowed herself to enjoy the rhythmic movements of the loom, the feel of the threads between her fingers, and the vibrant colors of the fabrics. As she wove, she let go of the need for perfection and instead embraced the beauty of imperfection. Over time, Soma found that her weaving became even more exquisite than before, but it was not the final product that brought her joy. It was the process itself. She realized that by letting go of the attachment to the outcome and embracing the present moment, she had found a profound sense of peace and contentment. Soma's transformation served as a powerful reminder that the path to resilience and fulfillment often lies in our approach to life's challenges. Just as Ananda had learned to integrate the Dharma into his daily existence, Soma had learned to integrate mindfulness and balance into her work. In doing so, they both discovered a deeper, more meaningful way of living. As the years passed, the Buddhist teachings continued to inspire individuals to overcome their hardships and find inner peace. The stories of his disciples and the wisdom they shared served as a beacon of hope for those facing adversity. One such disciple was Angulimala, a reformed bandit who had once terrorized the countryside. Angulimala's name meant finger garland because he had a gruesome practice of collecting the fingers of his victims as trophies. He was feared by all and the mere mention of his name sent shivers down people's spines. One day, Angula Mulla encountered the Buddha while he was on his rounds. Despite the danger, the Buddha approached him with unwavering compassion, and Angula Mulla was taken aback by the Buddha's fearlessness and presence. The Buddha, with a calm and gentle voice, spoke to Angula Mulla. I have already stopped, Angula Mulla. It is you who must stop now. Angula Mala was deeply moved by the Buddha's words. He realized the immense suffering he had caused and the torment he had inflicted upon himself through his violent actions. Overwhelmed by remorse, he surrendered to the Buddha and sought refuge in his teachings. Under the guidance of the Buddha, Angula Mala transformed from a ruthless bandit into a humble and devoted disciple. He renounced violence and dedicated himself to a life of compassion and spiritual practice. His story became a testament to the power of redemption and the potential for inner transformation, even in the face of the darkest past. The Buddha's teachings continued to spread, reaching people from all walks of life, transcending boundaries of caste, class, and culture. His message of resilience, compassion, and mindfulness offered a path to liberation from suffering for those who were willing to embark upon it. One day, in a bustling city, the Buddha encountered a wealthy merchant named Anathapindika. Anathapindika was known for his generosity and his deep respect for the Dharma. He had heard of the Buddha's teachings and felt a strong desire to meet him. When Anathapindika approached the Buddha, he expressed his longing for spiritual guidance. The Buddha welcomed him with open arms and invited him to listen to his teachings. Anathapindika, who had accumulated great wealth through his business, was eager to learn how he could integrate the Dharma into his life. The Buddha explained that while material wealth could provide comfort and security, true happiness came from cultivating inner wealth, qualities such as compassion, generosity, and wisdom. He encouraged Anathapindika to use his wealth to benefit others and to practice mindfulness and meditation to nurture his inner virtues. Anathapindika took the Buddha's teachings to heart. He began to use his wealth to support the Sangha and to help those in need. He built a beautiful monastery called Jedavana Grove, where the Buddha and his disciples could stay and share the Dharma with others. Anathapindika's transformation from a wealthy merchant to a compassionate benefactor of the Dharma demonstrated that resilience and inner growth were not limited to those facing adversity. 
It was a reminder that regardless of one's external circumstances, the path to enlightenment was accessible to all who sought it. As the Buddhist teachings continued to spread and touch the lives of people from all walks of life, his own journey had come full circle. From the moment he left his palace seeking answers to the nature of suffering, to his awakening under the Bodhi tree, to the countless lives he had touched with his wisdom and compassion, the Buddha's life had been a testament to the human capacity for resilience and transformation. In his final days, the Buddha gathered his disciples and shared his parting words of guidance. He reminded them that all things were impermanent and that the Dharma would be their guide after his passing. He urged them to be lamps unto themselves, to rely on their wisdom and inner strength to navigate the challenges of life. With his last breath, the Buddha encouraged his disciples to continue the work of spreading the Dharma and alleviating the suffering of all sentient beings. He passed away in a state of deep meditation, leaving behind a legacy of wisdom and compassion that would endure for generations to come. The story of Siddhartha, who became the Buddha, and the journeys of his disciples serve as a timeless reminder that resilience, transformation, and inner growth are within the reach of every human being. Whether faced with the hardships of life or the pursuit of a deeper understanding of existence, the teachings of the Buddha offer a path to enlightenment, compassion, and lasting peace. Just as the lotus rises above the muddy waters, so too can we transcend the challenges and hardships of life, blooming into beings of wisdom and compassion. The journey may be long and arduous, but with unwavering determination, an open heart, and a commitment to mindfulness, we can find the strength to face even the hardest times in life and emerge with greater resilience, understanding, and inner peace.